Who's a good girl then? Who's a good girl? You want a boat? You little girl want a boat? Oh, uh, well, hi everyone. Welcome to my channel. I hope you're staying safe and well. Uh, you've caught me feeding Dracarys here. <laughs> I'm watching Game of Thrones again in case you hadn't realised. <laughs> this actually used to be my mudguard mascot on my motorbike. And my motorbike was called Dracarys. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yes, I'll get back to you later. Unboxing time! It arrived yesterday. Yesterday being the 7th... Yep, the 7th of February, 2024. It's from Motion RC Europe. It's a product by Freewing, as you've seen. Let's not mess around, let's get straight into the unboxing. Hi everyone, well here we are, another unboxing to do. This one is from Motion RC Europe. Let's crack this open and see what we've got inside. Free wing model, F35 Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter. This is actually a 1 13th scale 70mm EDF jet. You can read all that on the box cover. It's got a very small wingspan of 820mm. It's not much longer either. It's 1.2 metres. And it weighs 1.7 kilograms without the battery. Now I've heard and I've seen mixed reviews about this one. This is an unboxing so I won't go into huge detail but I will be putting flapperons on this. I'll be setting it up with flapperons so I can slow it down a little bit because apparently it's a bit of a rocket ship and it is prone to drop it out of the sky if you run it too slow. But let's see, let's uh, take this cover off and look at what's inside the inner box. Really well packed. I mean, the quality of the foam is pretty crap, uh, as in the outer packaging. It's a split box, so you're going to have wings and bits and pieces on the top level. We'll go into it, and underneath you'll have the fuselage and maybe some other stuff. Well, I'm going to move this over to one side, crack it open. We'll take a look at everything up close and personal. We have a manual. I've just ripped it. I always rip the back when I take that stupid... Oh, what's just dropped out? Ooh, what's that? We'll look at that later. Here's our manual, 1 13th scale. Yeah, oh, this is the V2, by the way. I didn't say that, did I? This is version 2. Yeah, it's... Uh Pretty clear. Centre of gravity there. What's that? 32 millimetres. Mm, from a very specific point on the wing. So we have to make sure we get that right. Aileron. The setting in the book on the aileron are too sensitive. So the aileron settings here need to be lower. So they've got 18, 14, I'll make the high rate 14 and the low rate 12 or maybe even 10, 14 and 10, something like that. And I'll put something in the middle, I'll mess around with that when we come to assemble it. Uh, yeah, but that's it. So we've got English up to page 9 or up to page 8. Page 9 starts with the Chinese and that's your instruction manual. I've said it before, they are 1 to 8, 9 to 16, but I've said it before, I find these fantastic. A, they're good to keep as a memoir, so when I get a plane and I've flown it and build it, I always write on the back here how the maiden went, and then that gets filed away. If I sell the plane, I used to take these in to the model shop with the plane, but I've been told that people just aren't interested in this when they buy a second-hand plane. So now I just keep them for myself in a separate filing area as planes I've had. So I can just sit down and take another look at them, should I wish. And it's much better than just having something online 
or having to have a printer and print it all out because that's a waste of paper. A waste of my paper. What is this? This is an electronic speed controller uh, manual sheet. That's all that that is. And this always comes on the free wing stuff now and it's got all the voltage settings of all the different bits and pieces that you're going to be using. Personally, and I am talking purely from my own point of view, uh, it does nothing for me. I don't understand it. You know, it's got a red LED light, 2 to 2.4 volts. And? But I guess they're, they're those electricians amongst you, you'll be able to calculate the complete voltage being used before the EDF unit kicks in or something. But I just don't quite get why they have these warnings on it. Anyone know? Please leave a comment. Anyone find that useful? Please leave a comment. Uh, I'd just like to know. Let's get on with the unboxing. As we've come to expect with Free Wing, everything's sealed in its own plastic bag. Let's crack this one open. The second one we won't. The second one being the all moving stabilator. Uh, we have two of them, of course, port and starboard. I'll just open one of them and we'll take a good look at it. And here we are, one nice bit of foam. It's really dense. Wow. Paint, paint. Got some... Oh, I see, that's a spar there. It's got a spar in it underneath. This is cool. This is a big plastic area, it must be glued onto the foam I guess. And it has a moulded in horn, no hole settings, just a single ball link on it here. And a plastic hinge system that it looks as if that must just push into the fuselage and get some screws or pegs or something in there to hold it in place and that's your hinging. I like that. Yeah, that's it. But it's really well made. Nice one, free wing. The hole here, I think, is when it's on a stick and they're spraying it or something. The other nice touch is the leading edge has a nice line of light grey over it. There, that's paint. This is paint and this is paint. Yeah, nice little touch that. So we have two stabilators and we will have two wings. I'll just give it a quick look over in the bag, this one, then we'll open up the other one. Yeah, looks good. And here we have a wing! Wow! Okay, let's look at this part first. It's got RFRB, and I guess that's the plastic pieces for when they're installed. So this would be right front, right back. Because this is the right wing. So they're just in place there. There's a little hole here, which I guess is your spar hole. Then we have a single servo wire, set of wires. Little key piece of foam here that would help key this in. That's nice. This tip section here on the wing is plastic. The rest is all foam. Now, um, on the instruction manual, you measure the centre of gravity from this kink here, not from the very root, but from this kink back. Yeah, 
uh, everything's paint. There's no stickers on this at all at this stage. So the light grey, the dark grey and the silver and the black is all paint by the look of it. It's either that or it's really, really good water decals. No, that's paint. It's definitely a paint. Yeah, look at that. It's really nice. Again, it's, it's got a little bit of marking on it. Nothing to complain about, really. Let's take a look at the underside. Nice moulding. Love these diamond shapes on... Can you see those? Yep, here. Yeah. There's your plastic pieces, screw holes. Yeah. There's your wire. Okay, here's your horn. Screwed in from the top. And it screws in to your horn here, which has two holes, and the very top hole is bigger than the bottom hole. All hinge ailerons, or I'm going to make it into a flapper on. Yeah. That looks okay. Uh, the white here looks like a transfer, water slide transfer, I'd say that is. And it's very nice, and it's only got the little tiny pin, I call them the pin foam injection ports or points. That one looks a bit manky there. <laughs> but that's generally pretty damn good, especially considering how it'll look when I've finished with it. It's hard to tell. I was going to say this is a plastic end piece. But it might just be... F no, it is. It's a plastic end piece here on the underwing. Just that piece. I guess it's when it tips that will protect it a little bit. Yeah, very nice wing. A massive long. Wow. Wing spar. Look at that. It's got to be a metre, I should think. Wow. Anyway, we've got a nice long wind spar. It's not particularly thick. And then we have a nose. Here is the nose. Keyed in, magnets to hold it. And it's got a plastic tip on it so you can store it on its nose if you keep this on. Yeah, not much else to see there really. Very smooth. Well painted. That is everything in the top portion of this split box. We'll crack the... Oh no, I tell a lie. What have we got here? We have a goodie bag. And as with free wing goodie bags, let's turn the light out because it will just glare at you. It lists the contents. So we've got two aileron push rods. We've got no steering push rod. Um, what else have we got here? Aileron push rods. Yeah, we've said two of those. Clevises. Ball head brackets, whatever they are. A little bit of non-slip shelf lining. Put on your battery tray. Non-slip mat, they call it. Eight screws of 3x10 and four screws of three by eight. And that's it, that's your goodie bag. We've got this, it's a little water slide transfer sheet. Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, BAE Systems with a few logos. You can decide if you want to use those or not. And they are water slide. It'd be interesting to see if they fall apart or not. Right, and here we have the fin and rudder, or one of them. Now, I told you a lie. <gasps> Shock horror. I said this was a V2. It's actually a V3. 
So this whole F35 is the free wing version 3. I stand corrected. Here we are, a paint and a water slide decal. Rudder horn already attached, screwed in from the opposite side. All matching colour. Top hole on the horn is bigger than the bottom hole. Servo installed, screw plates over, as was with everything else there. Screw plate holding it in by the look of it, or at least protecting it. There's your servo wire. Two plastic blocks here. They are plastic inside, there's no brass inlay, so you're screwing into plastic when you screw the wing, wing when you screw the fin on. And of course we get two of these as well with this one. Not one. Yeah, nice. Let me just go back to that wing. Let's take another look at this wing, because I didn't show you this. Here's the servo for the wing for what I will make into flaperons. Colour matching plate with two screws in it. The servos are not centred. But that's no big deal. I can put a server checker on it. Server? Servo checker on it. Set it to neutral and it will be centred. Then I can connect the rods. Yeah. And I'm guessing that will be the same for the stabilators but we'll see when we look at the fuselage so yeah this has got a servo here and that actually means they're both going to have servos yeah here not centered it's an easy easy task to do yeah very nice we've got a big bit let me get this out ready Let's take a look at the fuselage. Look at that. It is fantastic. Definitely flying body. Look at that. Wow. So this is a 70mm EDF 6S. You can see here where the nose attach. Good looking pilot. A little bit of... Uh, instrumentation in the cockpit we'll take a look at that a bit later I love this all the uh, this is all water slide decals and it looks like all of this as well this type of stuff is water slide decals already applied over the grey paint just come down the side we've got our Wing connectors, it's just plastic so you're screwing into plastic. This is the little key part for the wing. Here's where the spar comes out of the fuselage. It goes right across the fuselage and out the other side. That would account for its length. Here's the servo wire with the hooks on it for your ailerons. The decals as well. Let's take a look at the top. Wow, look at that baby. I mean, it looks fantastic. Uh, paint is the light grey. Paint is the dark grey. Everything else on here is probably going to be a water slide decal. But they are so well applied. Really well. This could be paint. And the white is no, I don't know. It's really hard to tell. It's done so well. This is a decal. Here's a decal here. The silver bit here is paint. It, it just looks really good. Really good. Obviously on the top here, this is where your fin on one side and fin on the other. And uh, Yep, and here they've got a bit of tape that they sprayed over and that protects the connector for the rudder so it won't have paint on the pins that's really good that's a good idea and although I exposed this one I pulled it out of there you can see 
the end part just didn't have any paint on it because they leave it like that when they spray it. And you can see that over this side, I won't pull that one out, it's clearly protected the pins are. That's really good. And the jet nozzle on the end, just brown foam. There's your 70mm EDF unit, just blasting out. Let's take a look on the bottom. Okay, we've got two servos. These are for your stabilators. And yep, you can see it here. This is the slot that you push in that plastic hinge and then you apply two screws down there. Looking good. And here are the screw holes for the fins to lock them in place. This is a cover for the EDF unit, so it's dead easy to get to. Got retracts. This is all paint underneath. It doesn't look as though it's got any decals on it. And we've got our got our wheel on the nose, nose gear, this is, what is this, this is plastic this piece, hard plastic, it's not foam, let's glue it on, we've got decals all over it, I can't work it, I guess you could put decals here, that's what those other ones were for, so it's on both sides, because they've already applied them on the left side they're already applied so you could just copy that on the right side but I won't be because it's free I'll put a piece of nose art there an ideal place for a piece of nose art I want to check the retracts but before we do that let's take a look inside this canopy canopy comes off really well there's your pilot. And as you can see in there, there's a bit of instrumentation. So it doesn't look too shabby at all. I quite like that. Well, this looks absolutely cavernous. This looks really good. There we are. Uh, what is this? This is an EC3. EC5. Funny numbers, don't they? I think it's an EC5. I still can't see it, and I should know by now what the heck they are. They are the larger of the EC connectors. One strap provided, but it's got a space for another strap here. And what's really good about these is that they're screw on battery boards. So if you want to apply another strap, you just unscrew them, take them off, and thread a strap through. And depending where the battery sits, I might have to do that. The board's coming up anyway, because under here you have a Y connector and the Y connector is used so you have a single plug for your aileron. And I don't want to do that, so I've got to split the Y connector out and just put some extending cables because I want to be able to put each aileron on its own channel and program flaps into it. Yeah, but it all comes up through the front here, so I'm guessing this is where... You put well I'm not guessing I know this is where you have to put your receiver uh, yeah but it looks good it looks really good I'll put some matting on here while I've got this open let's rig it up and take a look at the retracts let's see what a gear looks like okay let's take a look at that up close here's our nose gear fully sprung Looks good. Looks good. Take a look at the back. It's not, uh, it's just straight at the back here. But it is, oh, it's really hard. It is sprung. Same as this one. Yep, that's good. No doors, no sequencing. Don't need to worry about any of that. Just cutouts in the bottom for the landing gear to retract into, which we will do now. Okay, 
Just looking at this here, I've noticed the throttle has the little, the fourth little yellow wire, and this actually says on it reverse brake. Uh, so that's if I were to use it, I don't think I will, so let's ignore it for now. But that is one, two, three, four, five channels. Six, so a six channel receiver should work because I want to split the ailerons. So the aileron at the moment is single, it will be double. Yeah, and this, this is the Y lead connector here, and it connects under here. So I just have to take this board off and as I said extend it. That's really cool. This is your gear, steering gear here. Uh, yeah, it's very nice. It's very tail heavy of course because the EDF unit is sitting right here. It's got a hatch lock here which just slides back. I'll put this down, I can show you that. We basically just slide it back and lift this off. Now it's a little bit hard to lift off. It will come, but it's, it's not really easy. Just slide it back and then lift off. You have to squeeze it in a bit, so I might have to find a better way to take this off. I might put some little stubs here so I can actually get a grip of it without having to squeeze the, it is soft and flexible, but you do have to squeeze it in a bit to pull it off. Let me show you that without getting my uh, um, arm in the way. Which I don't think I can do because where my camera is. So I actually pull that back, squeeze this and lift up. It does work, but you have to squeeze it, as I said. I might just put a bit of a cocktail stub there and there. So I can just lift it up without squeezing the canopy. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm impressed with it. It's another great model from Freewing. It's quite an old model, so they have had versions 1, 2 and 3 out. This is the third version. There's still no gyro in it because Freewings are now putting gyros in their aircraft. Yeah, six channels should do it. So I'll use an AR630 in it. See how we get on. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay well. I look forward to you joining me soon on another video. Could be an unboxing, could be a build or assembly, however you prefer to call it. It could be flying, but at the moment, the one flying session I had was at the weekend. It's now Thursday and it is raining. And we're expecting snow. So I might not get out and do any flying this weekend. But I plan to repair the SU-27. And have that ready. Because I want to fly that again. It's good fun. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Cheers.